insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, episode 15. Living on the Edge. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and talented co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hello, everyone. How are you doing this week, sweetie? I am fantabulous. That is awesome. So today, Disney Detective, we have a boatload of information on Galaxy's Edge. Sure do. And then we have some information on uh, a fan favorite retiring. Mm-hmm. Then we can move on to our entertainment news, where we have wedding bells for a couple of our favorite cast members from a popular TV show we watch. Mm -hmm. And then we have some information on a uh, mix-up of judges on The Voice. Mm -hmm. And we will finish up from there with our insightful picks of the week. Are we ready? I think we are. This time, I think we are. Go for Disney Detective. So, as everybody, I'm sure, is aware, uh, Disney's Galaxy Edge in Disneyland will actually open this Friday. Um, And some of the things that are coming out is a first look at the guide map, um, where you can see where uh, the various different things are within uh, the park. Um, So it's actually going to be the largest and most technologically advanced single themed area in ever in a Disney park. Uh, You'll step right into the remote planet and it'll offer unique sights and sounds and smells and taste and be a complete immersive um, experience. Um, If you look at the map, you can see that there's actually uh, three entrances to the 14-acre land. Uh, once inside, there'll be plenty of uh, stores uh, to explore and kind of different uh, activities to kind of enhance your your adventure. Um, and you can also, uh, you'll be able to navigate through uh, the area using uh, the app, the park app. Uh, on your phone now are there have they announced any interactive games or anything in actually the app? they have that's that's one of the things um, on one of the the other articles talked about various different things that you could go to the other cool thing which if you want to um, bring up oh, I think you have it up already is that uh, Disney likes to do a lot of live streaming these days when they have different events so um, they're actually going to be doing a Galaxy's Edge live dedication ceremony that'll actually be on Wednesday, May 29th. It's going to begin at 8.20 p.m. Pacific time. So anybody out in the um, East Coast, it's actually 11.20 p.m. Um, and they're going to do their whole little opening ceremony thing. So that, that'll be really cool um, to watch. They've done it before for the fireworks and... Um, illuminations and other various things. So it'll be nice to kind of get, you know, a glimpse at uh, the the land a couple days be- before it opens. So that should be kind of cool. So with the guide map, does Disney typically release the guide maps ahead of time before the Sometimes openings? they kind of come out a little bit beforehand, but then they've been doing previews all week um, for the press and things like that. So I'm sure, you know, it, it came out you know that way too um but then another 
interesting article that D23 produced was the cool things that you might not know about Galaxy's Edge. Um, so going along with that, the interactive is that they have the data pad. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you download the Disney Play app um, and that you'll be allowed to actually interact with droids. You'll scan objects for special messages, be able to translate things and um, write thing, learn, you know, the Star Wars language and the Star Wars alphabet using um, using your phone. All right, trivia <coughs> question. What's the Star Wars alphabet referred to as? I I can't pronounce it. I have it on my screen. Arabish. <laughs> Thank you. You're just cooler than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so the, the app will help unscramble coded transmissions and hack into cool devices, control panels, and even droids that you'll be able to interact with. Um, obviously, one of the other things that a lot of people are excited about is the custom lightsabers. Now, Disney had already done... For years, you could make, a, a, you know, custom lightsabers, but they were play lightsabers. Right. They, you know, they were, you know, your typical all plastic, um, you know, for, I don't even remember how much they were, 30 bucks? More than they probably should have been. Probably. Yeah. Um, but now they're actually making the heavy metal, you know, light up uh, lightsabers. So the stuff that you would get from other third party uh, companies right. like uh, Ultra Sabers or something right, like that. Right, things like that. And now it's, it's you know, a Star Wars branded lightsaber. And they're running about $200, which That's honestly... That's about what they cost. That's it's typical. about what they cost. You know, for the, you know, the run-of-the-mill Star Wars person or, you know... Uh, park guests, they'd probably be like, oh my god, that's a lot of money. Where somebody that's into cosplay, a member of the 501st. Or um, just a geek like me. Or just a geek like you. You're like, 200 bucks? Yeah, that's, take that's, my money. <laughs> that's comparable, comparable to other Absolutely. custom savers that I've Absolutely. And and I was going to say, all the, the ones that, you know, the master replica ones that, right. you know, that you have. that That's totally doable. Uh, so that'll be uh, a very cool thing that a lot of people are looking for. And, you know, looking at some of the pictures, they have, you know, various different hilts. It's not just, you know, your standard three hilts. Um, you know, so it definitely looks very customizable. Um, yeah, I'd be interesting to see. I'd be interested to see what level of customization, because typically when you go and go to a, a custom saver or an ultra saver company, there's kind of a formula of the pieces you've got the right. pommel the hill the guard right. you know the various pieces that you can pick and choose and mm -hmm. intermingle um <clears throat> so i'm curious how much customization right disney's allowing right uh, it also makes me wonder if now that they're providing this service they haven't really gone out and cracked down on these third-party companies that we're doing are they going to do that now because it's going to yeah, infringe on know. their business i don't know well, and you figure, too, the only people, you know, I don't think it's something you can order online. I Not think it's yet. something you can, you know, you can only do in the park. And, yeah, maybe one, you know, it, that would be really cool if you could, you know, order it online, you know, have the, the different pieces you can, you know, pick from. I just hate it. I, I hope it doesn't result in Disney going after these, these other people that have provided that service all these For years, years now. Yeah. I can't see them doing that really but, you can't see disney no, cracking can't. down on someone who's taking away their business yeah, they got other things to worry about disney's as ruthless from a business standpoint as the mafia is stop they're not that bad oh, okay sure okay uh one of the other things uh that you can build is uh a droid um and they kind of had that before um they had the little droid little figures, factory right? where you could make the little figures and now they're expanding it um, so you can do an R2 unit or you can do a BB unit, um, and different colors and different circuits and make it, make it your own. Um, then they're going to have an area where you can have, uh, an alien breakfast, um, in one of the, the dining areas. So that's something made with know, real aliens. Yes. Made with real aliens. <laughs> Uh, and then obviously aliens abound the, you know, the, the outpost area will have tons of different characters, you know, walking around that you can, uh, intermingle with and, and, and do with or without cantina music playing probably with cantina music. I can't imagine, uh, that there wouldn't be, 
Um, so again, Galaxy's Edge opens uh, May 31st in Anaheim and then on August 29th in Orlando. Very cool. I, and just a side note, I, uh, I sent a coworker of mine out to California to do some work for us, and he's going to be attending uh, Star Wars, uh, attending Disney the week after it opens. Open. So I hope to get a first-hand account of just how, how crazy. crazy it is <laughs> out there with, with Galaxy's Edge open. Yeah, now. that that should be interesting. So it's it, hopefully it'll serve as a less of a deterrent for us to go sooner than we were originally yeah, planning. Yeah, we shall see. Very cool. So in other Disneyland news, um, I found this article that, that I thought was, was rather interesting. So Far- Farley the Fiddler um, is a cast member that's been around for uh, almost 50 years. Um, one of the, the wandering characters that you'd find uh, throughout the park. Disney used to have a lot more of them. Um, in Disney World and Disneyland. And over the years, some of them have kind of faded away. Uh, but it was kind of interesting to, to hear that he was, was still around, and he's actually hanging up his spurs this holiday weekend uh, after decades of, of playing music. Um, basically, he wandered around Frontierland, and he would find a spot and just perform you know, his little show, uh, he did seven shows a day, five days a week, Monday through Friday. Um, and he had a Facebook, has a Facebook page and people would follow him and, and post things, um, about him. Um, and he just, you know, enjoyed being there and, uh, you know, it's, it was time for him to, to pack up his, his spurs. Uh, he was basically part of the immersive, interactive, entertainment of Disney before those words even existed. He, you know, he's been there, you know, for, for a while. Um, but the good thing is that he's not saying goodbye forever, that they are going to uh, be booking him for different uh, special events uh, throughout, you know, the year. So he'll still be, you know, coming well, back. Cool. And, and they kind of do that too um with Disney Disney World I've seen that happen um when Pleasure Island was around and the Adventurers Club they had a lot of character actors that had various parts that were part of the experience of of the uh of the restaurant uh, of the um the nightclub right. and every now and then you'll see them pop up you know for for different things you know, throughout the year. So it's nice that Disney still, you know, holds on to them. So that was that was kind of a sweet story, you know. Now, is he the original actor, the, the original cast mm-hmm. member that played that? Yeah. yeah no, one else, his, no one else yeah, played it, it besides him. It was his him. original role, um, you know. So it was, again, it was, you know, kind of a bittersweet, you know, closing out. Now, I didn't see anything if he was going to be replaced by anybody, but... You know, Disney World has has their you know different uh, characters, you know that that pop up you know from time to time and, and do these little you know. Now was this a case of of him just retiring, yeah. getting the retirement age, or Disney phasing this type no, of entertainment? No, he just decided it was time. Plus, he he kind of figured get out before the craziness of Star oh, Wars yeah. Galaxy's Edge. Now he yeah. was sort of a wander. He didn't have a stay set no, stage. No, he, he basically. At would play he'd you know wander around frontier land and sometimes it would be in front of you know this one area sometimes it would be there he just kind of so you it was know. just the ambiance they were trying right, to create exactly play. that's pretty cool yeah that's so that cool. that was kind of sweet so well, hopefully they'll have something else come in to mm-hmm. replace him so you don't lose that right that that real and people sense. that were you know fans of his you know that enjoyed you know uh going and seeing him you know yeah. keep that up so it's did was there any word that he'd be performing outside of disney no nothing no nothing so about that basically he's just going to enjoy the california weather absolutely good for him i'm sure he's earned it Mm-hmm. awesome well that's it for disney detective sure is cool So, entertainment news this week. We have wedding bells from uh, a couple of cast members from a TV show that we enjoy. In fact, has been a 
insightful pick on the it on sure chain. has so and what was kind of funny was i didn't even realize that these two were were dating yeah <laughs> well no one tells it. us anything anymore <laughs> I know. we didn't we didn't get the invite we didn't get anything um yeah so it's the co-stars from uh the show the orville um it's adrian paliak and Palicki, um and scott grimes um, they were married in front of friends. No relation and... to Rick, right? No, no. <laughs> that was funny. Look at you. That was, that was good. Um, so they got married uh, last Sunday uh, in front of friends and family in Austin, Texas. Um, they shared various pictures on their Twitter account. Um, and uh, this past Monday, uh, writing that last night was truly amazing. I'm so grateful for the friends and family who made the trip to celebrate with us and to all of you for the kind words. Um, they actually began dating last year. Um, and Adrian was previously engaged to a stuntman, Jack uh, Spidell, in 2014, but their relationship ended the following year. Um, Grimes has a son and a daughter from his marriage, uh, previous marriage, um, where they wed in 2000, uh, I'm sorry, in 1997, um, and he was also married to a makeup artist from 2011 to 2017. So this is his third marriage, and this is her first. Very cool. Yeah, so it was, it was nice because, again, didn't even, you know, know that they <laughs> well, I believe they got funny, engaged like, in January. You, know, you, you watch the show and the show script it and and act it in such a way that Right. They don't interact never, in yeah, that they level. Don't so. interact in that level and when you do see them they kinda can't stand each other right, in, in some right. way. So it, it was it's a testament to how how, how good, good of actors they are. Yeah, so it was, it was kinda sweet and there were a couple of different cast members um uh from the various shows that they've both worked on. Um as you can see, uh, Minya um, worked with her on Agents, Agents of Shield. Of Shield yeah. um, she's worked with Scott before on on other things, so it was you know it was neat to see uh, them posting photos uh, from from the event as well. So congratulations! So it was a rather small event that they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was you know small it's, and intimate. You know, it's, you know, I guess from a fan standpoint, it's kind of nice to see. You know, right. people that are in the the entertainment business not doing a not big doing, giant, right? You know, you know, and it wasn't like a, a George Clooney super secret, right? You know, rent some estate somewhere to do it, right? It so. was like, oh, you know, we're from Texas, let's do it in you know our hometown. Yeah, so, really, so really sweet. Kind of, kind of cute. Mm -hmm. Cool. What else we got? So the other big shakeup uh, was Adam Levine suddenly decides that he is not returning to The Voice for next season. Um, he's been on it for 16 seasons. Um, it was actually the host of the show, Carson Daly, that broke the news on the Today Show on Friday uh, and revealing that Shelton's girlfriend, Gwen Stefani, who had been on the season... Um, had done season nine and season 12, would re be replacing him next year. Uh, it was definitely a surprise. It seems that even Disney executives were kind of shocked and, and were unaware of it because when um, earlier this month when NBC did their upfronts, um, he was mentioned as still being a host of the show, so it was kind of uh, sudden. Um, so he... Basically, sources had said that he really just wasn't having fun for some time now. I guess was kind of getting a little bored um, with it. And, uh, you know, so there were some, it was, it sounded like there were some mutual agreements that it was okay for him to leave, but there weren't any hard feelings. But now there are some stories that have been coming out saying that there were some hard feelings. So, you know. I don't know what, you know, what it is. Um, but, you know, there was a, a source that said he was just kind of burnt out by it. Um, and then Blake Shelton, you know, said that he didn't know he was leaving until the day before the announcement. Um, and, you know, he said that, it, you know, it was a, he was having a hard time wrapping his head around it um, with him not being there, you know. And after 16 seasons, you know, a lot had changed, you know, for, for all of them. 
And he said he was really going to miss working with that idiot. <laughs> nice. um, you know, and um, Adam and Blake were actually two of the original uh, hosts or judges on the show. Uh, CeeLo Green and Christina Aguilera were part of the original four right. that were on. Um, so, you know, a lot of judges have co- kind of come and gone, but Adam, you know, and, and Blake were, were the originals. So it'll be interesting to see, you know. What, you, what kind of impact do you think that's going to have on the longevity of the show? I don't know. I think because the, you know, the the I think what's nice about The Voice. Now I've I've watched it off and on. Um, I usually don't watch a whole season. I'll usually catch a couple of episodes. What I've always liked about The Voice is that they, in the beginning, they do go purely off of. The voice. It doesn't matter what your age is, what you look like, because the way that the show is geared is that the the judges don't see who is singing. They're only going by what they can hear right. when when it starts off. Um, the show they have you know international versions of it. You know that that play where there's you know different judges. There are some judges that were on the U.S. version that you know, go on to the the international version and, and whatnot. So I think it's one of those things. It, I think it's kind of nice, too, because I think they were kind of getting a little stale. Right. And when Kenny uh, Kelly Clarkson came on, that kind of revitalized, and especially the first year it was her person that won. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think it, it kind of works when they keep changing it up a little bit. Well, I kind of have flashbacks to... American Idol, mm-hmm. you know, when uh, Simon Cowell left American right, Idol. Right. And it kind of left the whole show in a lurch at that point in time because he carried the show. Right, and I think that that's the thing that's a little bit different is that with The Voice, what I think a lot of people are going to miss is the bickering back and forth between Blake and... Uh, and Adam, they kind of had like a bromance at times, but yet they would always kind of pick on each other. But then all of the judges kind of do that, you know, right. Kelly so it was a little more evenly spread across. Right. And like with Kelly, you know, coming in, she kind of was able to to poke fun at everybody, too. Whereas with American Idol, it was, you know, a little bit different where Simon was just the mean person. Right. right. All around. He filled a very vital role right, to the whole thing. Right, yeah. so it, it's different. So it, it'll, you know, it'll be interesting to see. But, you know, again, you know, different judges come and go. And, and I think that kind of helps to to spice well, it up. So And, you know, it's nice to to have a, a successful enough career that you can walk away from something mm-hmm. like this without giving it a second thought. Right, and it's not like he doesn't have anything else to do. Right. You know, he's the front man of Maroon 5. Yeah. You know, so it might just be, let me, you know, spend some time, you know. And we might see more creative work coming out of the band at this, at yeah, this point. absolutely, now. absolutely. So, so good luck to him. Very cool. Shall we move on to our insightful picks? I think we shall. As always, dear, I defer to you first. Maybe one day you should go first. Then I'll but... get yelled at. I don't want that. No. <laughs> Just saying. You know, because sometimes you should change things up. Sometimes. Just saying. Yeah, I'll walk out and, you know, let somebody else host the show. <laughs> Maybe Adam Levine's available to host the podcast. <laughs> I, but never mind. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Insightful picks. Let's insightful go. picks. So my insightful pick uh, this week is an American drama on NBC called New Amsterdam. Uh, it's actually based on uh, a book called Twelve Patients: The Life and Death at Bellevue Hospital. Uh, it premiered uh, last September on NBC. Um, and it has a very interesting cast of of doctors, uh, hospital uh, executives, um, uh, and it's basically, you know, it's your typical hospital drama, but what's nice is there's so many different cast members and everybody has their own little story going on, and each week you kind of find out a little something about each person, Um, you know, that, you know, uh, this one, uh, you know, the one doctor is estranged from his son, but over the course of the, the season, he, you know, develops a relationship and you find out why 
there was the estrangement. Um, but the cast works, um, you know, very well together. Uh, it was actually announced in February that they were going to be getting a second season. So that's that's always nice when you enjoy a show that, that it is going to uh, be coming back. Um, but the main uh, character is Dr. Max uh, Goodwin. Uh, he's a brilliant, charming uh, doctor who, at the beginning of the season, uh, becomes the new medical director at America's oldest public hospital. Um, and basically, he's trying to tear down the bureaucracy um, to be able to give care to, to everyone. So a lot of the times it's him fighting with, you know, upper management on, you know, what we have to do. And, you know, he basically cleans house. And, you know, in, in one uh, episode, he kind of works on a barter system. You know, he has all these, you know, the patients that owe money to the hospital, but he finds out that this one's a painter and this one um, you know, does electrical work and, you know, so basically, okay, well, you need to come and work in the hospital for so many hours to pay back your bill and your debt is paid. So, you know, things, common sense things that, you know, kind of make you think and like, oh, maybe we should do that in, in our day and age in, in yeah, society. Yeah, you really think that's going to happen in today's health care No, system. of course not. <laughs> but it, it's a nice, it's a nice dream, you know, to have. So it's, again, it's, you know, it's a nice you know, drama, you know, there's some, you know, meaningful parts, you know, parts that make you think and, uh, you know, and some some comedy thrown in, you know. But overall, it's a nice little feel-good feel good show, kind okay. of the things that I kind of like to watch. So Now, is the season over or is it still Yes, mid-season? they actually just had their season finale uh, two weeks ago, I think. Okay. Um, so if you want to catch it, you know, on demand, there were actually 22 episodes wow, um, of the season. Yeah, it was actually a full. Timing. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, you know, most shows it's a 12, yeah. 12 season. I think it was it was actually 22. So yeah, go back and and catch up on it, and you know, hopefully it'll be back, you know, next September. So that's when they are expecting it back. I know you did say they renewed. Well, that it. yeah, they renewed it, and that's when it premiered. So okay. You know, there was no date, but I'm guessing they're going to keep it with the same, you know, the same schedule. So. Very cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Good pick. Thank you. So I will stick with my um, boring history, scientific, <laughs> but entertaining picks that I go with. Uh, and it's another mystery show. This one is Mysteries of the Abandoned <laughs> on uh, Science Channel. Uh, again, not a not a brand new show. They're on currently on season four. Well, that's better than season like twenty five. Something so. like that. Yeah, um, they've been producing I think two years now. So there's about thirty one episodes. They're about an hour long. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the. Intro reads as follows, because I was going to rewrite this, but it's so well written, I had, mm. to, had to keep it. That's fine. They were, they were once some of the most advanced structures and facilities on the planet, standing at the cutting edge of design and construction. Today they are abandoned, <coughs> dangerous, some of them even deadly. From uninhabited cities to empty factories, these long-forgotten engineering marvels are scattered across the globe. Science Channel uncovers why some of the world's most advanced architectural achievements were eventually left behind in the all-new, although not new, series, <laughs> Mysteries of the Abandoned. Um, each uh, season is about six episodes long. Okay. And they go in, what's really is they go in and they look at stuff that was once at the heyday. They did uh, the rocket base at Pinamunda in mm-hmm. Germany at one point in time. They take you back to Chernobyl, and they take you into the right. exclusion Right, that was zone. actually an episode that I've seen multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they go up into the French Alps, and they show mm-hmm. you some of the, you know, what was considered the Maginot Line at the time prior to World War II, that was designed again to defend against not the Germans but the Italians because they the French had the foresight to realize the Italians were aggressors as well. Um, and what's really neat is they go in and they they walk through these these environments, these secret bases and these 
abandoned factories and they show you um, some of the Cold War era technology that Mm -hmm. when you look at it, you're like, all right, yeah, it's from the 50s and 60s, but when this stuff came out, they were doing all kinds of crazy scientific stuff with these Mm -hmm. things. Um, And, and, you know, none of it's going to be resurrected, but a lot of these were so top secret that the stories would have never been told. Right. Um, And some of these facilities are monumental in scale. You know, there's cities that they show you that one happened to be a uh, mining city in, I think it was Peru, where they were mining um, uh, material to build uh, ammunition for and fertilizer. It was originally for fertilizer. It mm-hmm. was uh, uh, potassium nitrate. And it they happened to have this location in the desert out there where potassium nitrate was naturally occurring on the surface. So they built a city around it, and that became the country's number one export. Oh, okay. And then World War II happened, and the Allies had blockaded any exports of this because it was being sent to Germany to make munitions, and the entire industry dried up. Mm. But like this town, because it's in the middle of the desert, everyone just left. And oh, it was okay, just, and just abandoned. Yeah, and it's like perfectly preserved, and mm. it was turned into a world heritage site. Oh, okay. Because of how well preserved it was. Oh, huh. wow. Um, but it's just it's one of those things where it's an insight into history where mm-hmm. you would not normally have have learned about it. Right, so, right. Uh, if you're a history buff, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is Mysteries of the Abandoned on Science Channel. Check mm-hmm. your local listings. Yeah. Uh, before we leave, I did want to offer a programming note. Uh, one thing we have been neglecting recently have been our uh, audio podcast listeners. I know uh, I've said multiple times that our links um, to the articles that we refer to here are in our credits. Which is fantastic for our video <laughs> for <anybody> that watches <laughs> uh, watchers, uh, but is pretty much useless for our audio listeners. So right. to, we're sorry. We we do apologize for that. And what we will be doing is including our show notes in their entirety on our website. So you'll be able to go to www.insightsintothings.com, uh, visit our insights in entertainment shows there, and get the show notes with all the links. Uh, and all of our insightful picks and everything else. Basically, the show notes that we work off of. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll also be able to find contact information for us there. You'll be able to find our show transcripts as well, if you just want to read through the transcripts. Uh, I will offer a caveat. They are they are done um, by an automated system, <laughs> so they are not always entirely accurate. Uh, they do a fantastic job murdering our last name, <laughs> um, which I think it's so comical I don't bother correcting it each time. Um, what else? Oh, also, our uh, YouTube channel is mm-hmm. now available. You can reach us at uh, youtube.com slash C for channel slash insights into things. You can see all of our podcasts there along with um, we have playlists set up uh, by show. And I think that was all the public service announcements we had. Did I miss anything? No, I think that was it. But we did want to kind of mention, um, we didn't mention this last week because we hadn't gone to it yet. So we weren't sure if we wanted to to plug it. Um, But yesterday we went to a toy show um, that was down in the Maze Landing area. So if any of you are in the South Jersey area, um, it was one that I had been hearing about and kind of sounded interesting. So we decided to to take a lovely Saturday drive on the Memorial Day holiday weekend down towards the shore, which fortunately we didn't really hit too much traffic. No, we were very lucky. We were very lucky. Um, and it was a, a lovely little hidden gem uh, of a toy show that we found. It was more of a, a toy flea market, I right. guess you could say. Uh, they had various different vendors there. Some vendors that, you know, uh, had different stores um, where, you know, this was a a place for them to come and and bring some stuff. And then other people that did flea markets Mm -hmm. uh, and then other people that, you know, just kind of come out every now and then um, with with toys to to sell. Uh, Basically, 
anything and everything was there. Um, if you were into Legos, if you were into Star Wars, if you were into pop, you know, the pop vinyls, you know, they, there was definitely something there. And you this know. is an annual show. Right. And sponsored by, was it Farpoint? Uh, Farpoint Toys, uh, which they have a, sh- uh, a store, which I kind of felt bad because afterwards we had never even gone into the yeah, actual. We, never gone <laughs> we were the like, store. oh, crud, we forgot to go into the store. Uh, they had a food truck there. Uh, they had a water ice truck there. Um, it was free to attend. Uh, there was no, uh, they had plenty of parking. They had parking across the street, and they even had somebody who was wearing a Punisher shirt, which we thought was kind of funny. Uh, directing that was traffic. directing traffic, yeah. for, you know, helping people, you know, cross the road. Um, just all around, you know, nice community of people like everybody very you know, supportive community very supportive very sociable people yeah you know you walked into somebody's tent it was hey can i help you what are you looking for you know it wasn't your typical show that you go to your pop culture show you go to and it's a bunch of sharks that are trying to weasel money at right it. you know a lot of people would negotiate and you know there were some people where you know the prices were just so good you didn't have to right you know negotiate we what, all what you have were collectors selling to collectors and exactly it was a community right exchange. they even had uh some uh they had um the a-team Van. Yep, yep, some celebrity vehicles. The, we had the General Lee. They we had, had the, the General Lee. Hutch car. Right. So that was kind of cool, too. So, you know, people were taking, you know, taking pictures of that. It was a beautiful day out. Um, and it was it was a really good event. You yep. know, we we really enjoyed ourselves. And it's definitely one that's now, you know, on our radar uh, to definitely attend. And the other nice thing, too, was that when we were talking to one of the vendors, it was actually free to vend as well display, yeah, um yeah. so anybody that you know has a lot of stuff that they're looking to you know to to sell and you don't want to have to pay you know uh you know a table fee um you know this might be something to to look at if you're if you're in the area so yep. so sh- big shout out to uh farpoint toys for sponsoring that and uh i think we're done for the day i think we are all right thank you for another great podcast dear Thank you as well, my love. And we will talk to everyone next week. Mm Mm-hmm.